stir our hearts today. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Just tell it.
table. Matthew 21, we will look at today. In Matthew 21. And I want to deal with that today. Matthew 21. And we will look at verse number 13. Matthew 21 and verse number 13. Father, again, I thank you for the privilege of preaching the Word of God, of reading thy Word. Now, Lord, open our eyes that we might behold wondrous, wondrous things out of thy Word. Reveal it to us. Help us to learn and grow in grace and knowledge of thee. And we'll thank you for what you do in the name of the precious Lord Jesus, who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord who is mighty in battle. Amen. I mentioned a few minutes ago that it is probably the most hardest, most difficult thing to do in the Christian life is this thing of prayer. And uh, in verse number 12, he says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast all of them out the soul and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of money changers and seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. That's page 1290 if you're using your defined King James Bible. So you'll see that he said, he said, my father's house, or my house should be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And so he said it is written. And so the first thing you want to understand is that what God says is written, it was not that he, he made that up, but it is written that man, uh, or that God's house should be called a house of prayer. And that's what it is supposed to be. In Isaiah 56, in verse number 7, he said, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifice shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So it is a place where they can go and boldly go before the throne of grace. It is a place where you can come confidently to God. In, uh, in, uh, in uh, Second Chronicles in 7.14, we find that uh, they were talking about the prayers that were made in that house. Where, and he said, and if God deals with them. He said, my people, which are called by my name, shall turn from their wicked ways. You know the revival verse there. He is dealing with, have built, having built the temple for the Lord. And they were getting ready to sanctify the temple. They were in the process of sanctifying it unto the Lord, and God told them what this temple was for. And uh, here he tells us in Isaiah, it is to be called a house of prayer. Jesus deals with this thing. It's to be called a house of prayer. The number one responsibility of the child of God is prayer. The number one responsibility of the child of God is not go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It is not that. It is prayer. It is having a personal relationship with God. Right. Now your personal relationship will work out in a practical relationship to telling people about God. Because the more you fall in love with Him, the more you're going to want to talk about Him. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. When I first met my dear precious bride, who was not my bride the first time I met her, I know that. But when I first met her and got to know her a little bit, uh, they started talking. I was on the phone with her, and we didn't have cell phones, so it was usually a work phone or something to that effect. I was calling her. I was talking to her. I was spending time with her, and I was telling people about her. You say, why? Because I was in love. And the more I got to know her, the more I fell in love with her. And guess what happened? I talked more about her. 
But I will say this. It's more so with the Lord. I got saved, got born again on the 10th of 1988. And all I wanted to do was tell people about the Lord. And the more I spent time with Him, the more I wanted to talk about Him. It wasn't, a, it wasn't something I had to work up. But it was something that He had worked in and that was working out in me. Because I fell in love with Him. And I can say this, not every Christian young or old or, or blind or anything like that uh, 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 or deaf or dumb not every Christian can preach say so, oh are you saying that some can't preach <laughs> hallelujah yeah, ask some folks that hear me and they say hey, there's living proof of that but I say this there's not a Christian out there that cannot pray because the Spirit of God is inside of us crying out, Abba, Father. Prayer. In the simplest sense, is fellowship and communion with God. That's what it is. It's us having fellowship and communion with God. So I want to deal with this thing of the, the Christian's number one responsibility, prayer. And I want to deal with it and give you some verses from the scriptures. Number one, I want to deal with when to pray. Number two, I will deal with how to pray. And number three, I will deal with why to pray. Simple stuff. Nothing difficult about this. And you know it all, but I'm wondering rehearse it in your ears and remind you one more time and refresh us because the Father's house is to be called a house of prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer. When to pray? And you know the verse. 1 Thessalonians 5, 10, 17 tells us when to pray. He tells us in those three words, one of those being a compound word, pray without ceasing. When to pray? Pray without ceasing. He means wherever you are, whenever it is, in the midnight hours, pray without ceasing. He says in the middle of the day, pray without ceasing. He says when you arise in the morning, pray without ceasing. And when you get ready to go to bed at night, pray without ceasing. When you get ready to get gasoline in your car, pray without ceasing. When you get ready to walk someone on television,